IKEA is once again going down the renewable road with this mobile phone holder which is made from paper pulp. You can even store some pens inside this thing. This is so renewable that I think I can make my own. I mean, I have paper and I can pulp things. So let's see if we can make some molds and make our own IKEA products with blackjack and hookers. And if paper pulp doesn't work, we'll use meatballs. After my visit to IKEA, I made a model of these phone holders on my computer. The modeling wasn't very hard, but the question was, how do I turn this into molds? And I found a very neat trick that I want to share with you. If we put a cube exactly around our desired shape and then explode it into parts, we actually end up with our original shape and the three part mold. This will make releasing our paper pulp from the mold so easy. I added some tabs and slots and holding plates and then I printed all my molds in a 1 to 4 scale on my trusty old Prusa Mark II. I picked up the cheapest blender I could find and then it was time to get some glue. I was actually inspired to make this video by XYZ Aiden on YouTube. The promise was that I could make anything out of cardboard. Well, let's see. The recommendation is to make glue from rice paste, so let's do it. Basically just overcook the hell out of the rice. Then we can stretch some paper into our new blender, add some of the rice paste and some water and let's blend. I was super scared of breaking the blender instantly with this process. Mm -mm -mm. Doesn't that look delicious? My first instinct is to just straight up put the pulp into the mold. However this doesn't work, you need to first squeeze out a little bit of moisture. Then fill the mold and clamp it down. After about three days I was ready to open the mold and it's somewhat of a result but not that great. Okay so maybe 25% scale was too small for this to work so we're going to 50% scale. Pulp, collect, squeeze, hmm, mold, clamp, wait a few days and we have a result. Not perfect, the bottom is missing but it is an improvement. Now until this point I was using the rice paste as a glue and I've been working on this for weeks. Wow, this is disgusting, like, ugh, the smell of this is so gross. Like there's these huge pellets of, of mold. And what's the first thing you do when you find something really gross? Show it to your girlfriend and she's not gonna like it. But before we can show her, here's a quick message from our sponsor, PCB Way. I've recently started making my own PCBs. And PCB Way helps me put this into actual physical materials. All I need to do is to go to their website and fill in the form and I will instantly get a quote about pricing and delivery times. Thanks for sponsoring this video, PCB Way. Okay, on to showing my girlfriend the gross stuff. <laughs> this is so f***ing whore. Oh! Oh, oh, the luft is not lekker. Oh. Yeah, so for now we'll be sticking with this PVA glue. I made another iteration, this time with glue clamp holders and saving some plastic. And this time the bottom didn't even break. I think we're ready to scale it up. I also added some holes so the water could escape. I first made them too small, but after I increased the size a bit, they were okay. Let's pulp a bit more. Up until this point I had been cutting the cardboard by hand, but then on the King's Day flea market I found a shredder. It only cost me 2 euros. Come on man, you can do it! Uh. Oh! Jesus. This stuff drastically reduces in size when you squeeze the water out of it. And I gotta say, I don't love the process. Everything gets dirty, glue everywhere, water everywhere. It looks like crap. But hey, we've gotten this far, so now we're committed. I think part of the challenge of this object is the shape of it. I mean, if you just make a little bowl or something, it, it's kind of easy. Still, you need so much material and everything gets dirty. And I, I, I wouldn't really recommend this to anyone. So our water release system is working, which is nice. Then we wait about a week and then we can remove a few parts of the mold. This part got damaged because of the pressure, but the result is nice. On the other side, not so much. 
This type of mold doesn't really exert any force on the vertical walls, so they're not really that strong. Now this thing is still a little bit wet, so I want to put it in a little oven. Of course, at my local electronics store, the cheapest little oven is 109 euros. That's too much. Luckily, I also found one at the second-hand store. Hooray! 12 euros. If you go above about 70 degrees, you get stuff like this, so I put it at 65. So it's been like 15 minutes and it smells disgusting in here. I'm not sure if the water has rotted or if this is just the glue that we're heating up, but it's really gross. Okay, so I was thinking it's really hard to make this phone holder. Maybe there's a different object we can make with more ease, something simpler, like a small battery holder. So I found this model online. With the same trick as last time, I make some molds for this. This time it's a two-part mold. So let's start printing. And this time I got an awesome surprise. Bumbelop sent me a 3D printer to try out. The A1 with the AMS light color switching system. And in terms of integrity, they had no requests regarding what I would say in this video and what I would not say. But I want to say this thing is awesome. <laughs> I mean, this video is not sped up and it's ridiculously fast. If I would print the IKEA phone holder on this A1, or on a Prusa Mark IV, they would be equally fast with the same settings. Compared to the Prusa Mark II that I use right now, it's even twice as fast. If you order the A1 through the link in the description, you also support the channel. Expect to see a lot more of this printer in my upcoming videos. Okay, so back to the battery holder. This was a total mess. Oh God, this just fucking sucks. I love how you can see the frustration in my hands in this part. Another six hours of cooking the phone holder ensued, and then I smelled again. Super gross, but I think we're done. Oh yeah. After a bit more messing around and pulling, we get our phone holder. Yes, there we go. Whoa, hey, hey. Oh, I actually like this. And after a quick repair with some hot glue, we're there. We did it. I never have to go to Ikea again. Although, except maybe for meatballs. Everyone likes IKEA's meatballs, right? Let's do one last experiment. Why, hello, and welcome to Cooking with Jens. Today, we will be making this IKEA desk organizer from meatballs. Mm -mm -mm. Remember kids, never waste food. Oh, and we're using the veggie meatballs. <laughs> For you ASMR fans, I got you covered. Here's some close-up meat noise. <laughs> Jesus. The mold hardly fit into the oven and I think I smeared some meatballs onto the heating element. This time I cooked at 100 degrees Celsius. After about three hours, my room smelled disgusting, but I could remove some parts of the mold. Then I cooked the meat phone holder for three hours longer. Oh! <laughs> yep. Okay, here we are. The meatball IKEA desk organizer. Check it. I think this is the most stupid thing I've ever made. Oh, I'm getting a call. Hello? If you want to support the channel, become a Patreon. Your name will be mentioned in my videos and there's a lot more perks. Check out patreon.com slash Jens Maker Adventures now.